Hi, welcome to Florida Drone Supply. My name is Derek, and today we're taking a look at the DJI Mini 2. In this video, we'll be going over the features that this compact drone offers and looking at how it compares to the DJI Mavic Mini 1. Let's get started. So, to begin, let's talk about the specs of this new drone. The main thing that makes this drone great is its size. Weighing in at just under 250 grams, this drone is barely under the weight limit for the FAA registration. So unless you're using this drone for commercial use under Part 107, there's no need for you to register this drone with the FAA, which is great if you're a hobbyist and don't plan to fly your drone professionally. Of course, all the same rules still apply when it comes to airspace and drone regulations. So make sure to check your local laws and regulations before flying. The size of this drone is also great for anyone who needs or wants to be able to travel light because this drone is so small, it can fit easily into a backpack no problem. The size of the Mini 2 also makes it easy to hand catch and launch, which can be very helpful depending on the terrain. We'd also recommend using a landing pad for this drone if you don't plan on hand launching it because it sits so low to the ground that even blades of grass can interfere with the props. But despite its small size, this drone performs very well. DJI advertises a max battery life of 31 minutes, but in our testing, we found the real world flight time to be closer to 23 or 25 minutes, depending on wind speed and how you fly the drone. Also, if you have any batteries from the Magic Mini 1, they also will fit in the Mini 2. However, putting a Mini 1 battery into a Mini 2 will put it slightly over the FAA's 250 gram weight limit, so be sure to keep that in mind. Also, batteries from the Mini 2 will not fit in the Mini 1. The Mini 2 also has more powerful motors than the Mini 1 for better performance in wind, with a wind resistance level of 5 for max wind speeds up to 19 to 24 miles per hour. The Mini 2 is also faster than the Mini 1, with a top speed of 35 miles per hour in sport mode, compared to only 29 miles per hour on the Mini 1. The props are quieter on the Mini 2, which makes it a bit easier to fly without drawing too much attention or causing a distraction. I can tell you that in my experience flying this drone, I had no trouble whatsoever in its performance. This drone did everything I needed it to with ease. One thing to keep in mind though, is that although this drone performs very well, its overall speed is affected by the strength of the wind. So be sure to pay attention to wind direction so that you aren't facing strong headwind during your return flight with a low battery. Another major upgrade is the new controller with OcuSync 2.0. This controller is very similar to the controller that came with the Mavic Air 2 and is much more reliable than the enhanced Wi-Fi connection used on the Mini 1. And OcuSync 2.0 also suggests that it may be possible to use this drone with the DJI Smart Controller in the future. With the standard Mini 2 controller, DJI is claiming a max range of 10 kilometers. I took it out as far as 2,500 feet and had no trouble so long as I maintained line of sight. At one point, I did lose my video feed for a moment when going under a bridge, but other than that, I had no trouble at all maintaining a good connection to the drone. The new controller is larger than the previous controller for the Mini 1, but I do think overall I prefer this controller to the old one because it just fits very well in your hands and the phone holder, which is also the controller's antenna, holds your phone above the controller instead of below, like it does on the Mini 1. The new controller also has a switch with three modes available, normal, cine, and sport, and can also charge your phone while in use. The Mini 2 now uses USB-C instead of micro USB, and the props have orange tips on the end, which helps you see the edge of the prop better. One of the downsides to the Mini 2 is that it only has sensors on the bottom of the drone to help it with landing, but other than that, there are no sensors for obstacle avoidance, unlike the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic 2 Pro. So be sure to pay attention to your surroundings at all times when flying. Now, let's talk about the camera. The Mini 2's camera has been upgraded to a 4K resolution compared to the 2.7K on the Mini 1, and the sensor size is still the same as the Mini 1 with a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. 
For comparison, the Mavic Air 2 has a half inch sensor and the Mavic 2 Pro has a one inch sensor. The camera has a fixed aperture and shoots 4K in 24, 25, and 30 frames per second and up to 60 frames per second in 1080. It also has a max bit rate of 100 megabits per second compared to only 40 on the Mini 1. The Mini 2 has manual and auto exposure controls and a digital zoom feature, which is lossless unless shooting in 4K. This feature is great because it allows you to really fill your frame with your subject without having to get too close and it helps also add more dimension to your shot by increasing the parallax effect, which is how things look in your shot as they move in relation to one another while the camera is moving sideways. The Mini 2 also has quick shot modes like Droney, Helix, Rocket, Circle, and Boomerang. But again, remember that there is no obstacle avoidance on the Mini 2, so make sure your surroundings are clear when using these modes. Also, the resolution for quick shots defaults to 1080p, so make sure to go to the main menu and under the camera settings, change the resolution to 4K for the best quality. Unfortunately, there is no point of interest, spotlight mode, or active track on the Mini 2. There's also no asteroid mode, like on the Air 2. Also, the camera can't be adjusted while the drone is performing a quick shot, so if you try to adjust the camera in the middle of a quick shot, it will cancel that maneuver. The Mini 2 also shoots stills in JPEG or RAW. Three exposure auto bracketing is available, but there's no auto HDR mode, so the photos will have to be blended in post. There are also panoramic and sphere modes available. Some downsides to the camera are that there is only one color profile available and low light performance isn't great. The dynamic range is limited on the Mini 2 and auto exposure tends to overexpose by a little bit. So I recommend underexposing your video ever so slightly as to not clip the highlights. I also notice a slight bobbing up and down when conditions are windy and when I was close to my subject. But overall, I think this camera performs great. All of this footage was shot in 4K and has not been color corrected, so you can see how it looks straight out of the camera. So what comes in the box? You have two options for the Mini 2. You can purchase it with a controller, one battery, and spare props for $449, or you can get the Flymore combo for $599 which comes with a bag, three extra batteries, a charger, and a strap to hold the props in place on the Mini 2. This is the option we recommend because it's the best deal overall. The battery charger can charge up to three batteries, but only charges one at a time. It also uses USB-C. The bag it comes with is okay, but not great. But the Mini 2 is pretty much identical in size to the Mini 1, so it should fit into just about any case that is made for the Mini 1. They're so similar in size, in fact, that I would say most accessories made for the Mini 1 are probably also compatible with the Mini 2. So, my final thoughts on this drone. Overall, I think it's great. The price to performance ratio is hard to beat, and it's a great beginner drone. It could be a perfect fit if you travel a lot and need something that's really small that can easily fit in your bag. And no FAA registration necessary if not flying commercially, which is nice. It's also a great option because it's just so easy to grab it and go and fly just about any time. It's also easy to hand launch and catch, which can be very helpful depending on the terrain. And the camera on this drone is fantastic. The main downsides are the lack of obstacle avoidance and the lack of certain automated modes that you can find on the Air 2 and Mavic 2 Pro. But again, considering the price and how easy it is to use this drone, it really is hard to beat. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave us a like and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more drone content like this. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below or visit us at floridadronesupply.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.